Friends, roadies, countrymen, and all listeners around the world, here we go again. It's me, J.E., John Edmund, once more. And this month, it's Father and Son Month. So, over to the younger set. Here we go. Hi, everybody. This is Grant Edmund here, John Edmund's oldest son. And welcome to the John Edmund Podcast Sessions. Today I'll be sharing a couple of stories of what it's like with life on the road with the famous John Edmund. First of all, um, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. I've been a professional musician for 38 years now, and I've been involved in the music industry as a live musician, a producer, an arranger, and a composer. So uh, I'm not that new to this game. The first really, really big gig that I did with my dad was in uh, the early 90s, and it was the Rhodesian Centenary Celebrations at uh, Chippees Resort, what was then the Northern Transvaal. The start of the trip, we flew in a twin-engined 421 Cessna uh, from Grand Central Airport in Midrand up to Chippees, with uh, our pilot was Don Watt. And... uh, the funny thing was, I'm really, really nervous of flying. So we loaded all our equipment into the aeroplane. I had to take the seats out, left two in the back for Dad and I. And uh, off we took from Midrand, and I think we were just sort of over the Pretoria area. And the one engine decided, I'm not going to work anymore. Being as nervous as I am of flying, the first thing I thought of, geez, I could do with a shot of whiskey now. But unfortunately, the whiskey that I'd taken with was in the wing compartment, so there was no go there. Anyway, after about five minutes losing a little bit of height, Don uh, managed to get the engine going again, and off we went to Chapeze. Coming into Chapeze, woof, what a landing. It was a really, really, really rough airstrip, and by now I was so, so nervous. And all the time, Dad was just laughing at me because he's not that afraid of flying, being a pilot himself. So on arrival, as we taxied in at Chippees, I was nervous. I just wanted to get out of this aeroplane. And I remember opening the back door and stumbling out of there. And there was this tall guy and saying, hi, can I help you? And I said, yes, please, can you just unload all the equipment? And he said, no problem. And when I looked again, it was the incredible Mr. Derek Watts from Carte Blanche. And I was so embarrassed and he just laughed at me. So we loaded all the equipment and our guitars and stuff into the combi that was waiting for us and uh, it was a, a really really special time because uh, the MNET crew uh, with Derek Watts and uh, they were filming for carte blanche and it was being directed by one of our oldest family friends which was Mr Mark Williams. Now some of you might uh, remember Mark as being my dad's uh, musical director on all his two, uh, some of the tours in Rhodesia during the Bush War. So it was really, really fantastic having Mark there. And off we went to the camp and found, got our bungalow and got settled in. And uh, we were only due to play the following night. So we had a little bit of time to uh, get our equipment sorted out. And uh, had a really, really good evening with all the guys from MNET. And uh, it was just really, really so good to be there and to see all these Rhodesian people there must have been a thousand people in that resort, everybody wearing roadie t-shirts. And uh, the place was actually called Rhodesia, Rhodesiana Land, if I'm not mistaken. And on arrival, everybody received a little printed uh, Rhodesian passport, which I thought was absolutely fantastic. The next morning, we were uh, taken down to the amphitheater and started setting up all our equipment. And uh, I was just so honored uh, to be introduced to Uh, the Prime Minister of Rhodesia, Mr. Ian Smith, and his lovely wife, Janet, and uh, the commander of the Rhodesian Army, General Walls, was also there. And they came up and they said they were looking really forward to the show. So we basically spent a couple of hours doing some sound checks and getting everything together and just waiting for the big night to happen. It was quite nerve-wracking because I must uh, tell everybody, uh, during those days... um, Dad and I just had to sit and rehearse because I was playing bass pedals and guitar and we had a drum machine and we had to get all the troopy songs in uh, Dad's Rhodesian song sound in as close to the original as possible. And I was really, really nervous that uh, we were going to be 
a little bit substandard, but at the end of the show, we got standing ovations after nearly every song. It was just the most phenomenal, wonderful, wonderful show. And uh, we were really, really cheered on. And uh, I think the drinks must have flowed till about five o'clock the next morning because everybody was just in absolute party mode. And uh, Derek Watson and Mark Williams went around and did some fantastic interviews with all these people, all these people that have had to vacate their land. And it was just so heartwarming to see those interviews afterwards. After spending uh, one more, I think we did one more day there and then flew back to Joburg uh, with an, thank heavens, an uneventful flight. We got back to Joburg and... Uh, it must have been on about the Tuesday morning and Dad and I just re checked all, all the gear, made sure all the cables, everything was ready, re-strung guitars, loaded it all into our car and off we drove down to Durban uh, to do the centenary celebrations in Durban. The Durban show was held at the then Malibu Hotel, which was a fantastic, I think it was a four-star hotel and uh, we had it in their huge conference centre also very well attended. I'm sure there were about 800 people. And uh, the Honourable Mr. Ian Smith and his wife, lovely wife Janet, were there as well. So it was a really, really fantastic show. And uh, after that show uh, led to quite a few more gigs down in uh, KwaZulu-Natal with uh, Dad and I for the BSAP people. We landed up doing quite a few uh, really, really nice shows down in KwaZulu Natal for the BSAP organization. A really, really great bunch of people, uh, namely Mr. Chris Driver and Rob Bristow were always the organizers and they really looked after us. And we had so many, many successful shows where we raised money for the organization. And uh, one funny incident the one year we went down and uh, they held uh, at, at the prestigious Westfall Country Club. Anyway, all the BSAP guys were packed in there with their wives, and we must have had oh, probably about 400 people. Did a fantastic, fantastic show. Everybody was so happy. And after the show, we were all standing around and mixing and mingling and socializing, signing autographs and selling CDs. And uh, the, the manager of the, of the club came up uh, to Chris Driver, and he said, I'm sorry, but the bar is closing. Now, that's one thing you just don't do to a whole bunch of BSAP guys is just tell them the bar's closed without ordering a last round. And one of the funniest incidents happened that night. A wonderful chap by the name of Neville Park and said, I'll sort this out, guys, don't you worry. And I think there must have been about uh, 10 of us standing around. And he went and he found an ice bucket and he went to every table and he poured in the dregs of every drink. There was beer, whiskey, brandy, vodka you name it every conceivable type of alcohol all the little dregs he had poured into this uh, huge ice bucket thrown ice in there said come guys let's go out to the car park and we all passed the bucket around and uh, drank until it was finished and i'll tell you one thing what a concoction it was so as we departed at about two in the morning my dad said can i please have the ice bucket and uh, Dad, with his wonderful sense of humor and probably one of the biggest practical jokers, we took it back to Joburg. And Dad had uh, printed on there the Edmund and Son BSAP trophy for hooliganism. And it was a floating trophy. And every year it either went to us or it went to the BSAP. And I think it's still around somewhere. I think it might even be in Dad's collection of uh, paraphernalia in his archives. During the years, um, John and Teresa had a wonderful uh, game farm up um, between Tabazimbi and Warm Bars, a beautiful place, Kunkuru. And uh, every year we would have a, a big Rhodesian concert up there. And those were some of the greatest, greatest gigs that I ever did with Dad, namely because I had uh, John Ross on stage with us. And the one year, my beautiful daughter, Kelly, who's a fantastic singer, she flew out from the UK and... Uh, there's some wonderful photographs of the four of us all on stage. It was so nice to see um, John with his two sons and his granddaughter. And they were really, really good days. We had quite a good few shows at Kunkuru. And then after Kunkuru was sold, um, we had the last sort of big Rhodesian one, which was organized by Dad and Teresa um, at Mbizi Resort, which is just outside Warmbars. 
and that was also such a brilliant brilliant show well attended and uh geez we, we we rocked the roof off that place and after that uh dad and i did a couple of really really big rhodesian get-togethers as edmund and son one was in boxburg just um before COVID hit us all and we had a sellout show there with about 300 people that was really really fantastic and uh after that we were invited by one of the biggest radio stations uh community stations uh called ifm and they invited uh, dad and i to do a father and son show uh at sharky town in funderbell park and it was hosted by the fantastic mr rick emden who's one of the top djs so all in all my days on the road with dad have absolutely been fantastic we've had so much fun we've had so many laughs but sharing the stage with him has just been an absolute honor being able to play those fantastic songs that he's written through the years and uh, to make them try and stand out as best i can as his backing musician and uh, even when we're not on the road together whenever dad's away doing a gig somewhere he'll phone me and tell me a funny story about maybe the accommodation that they stay in or the road they had to drive and i do the same so it's really really been a fantastic ride doing shows with my dad probably since 1991 now and um, it's just been a lot of fun over the years and I've learned so much I really have. I'd just like to thank you for listening to some of my little anecdotes about uh, being on the road with John Edmund and uh, the next podcast I'll, I'm going to be doing for you wonderful people um, I'll be telling you all about the time that dad actually entrusted me and uh, promoted me to be his producer and i produced some wonderful albums of songs that he's written through the years and we'll be talking about those soon so i hope you guys enjoyed this everybody stay safe be warm and chat to you soon this is grant edmund signing off thanks my boy that was great in closing may i remind you all to like and subscribe to my youtube channel keep an eye on my website and should you want any of my music, it's available on most popular music platforms. Till next time, it's goodbye from Africa with Totsin Salagashle and Zwakanaka. <laughs>